Yeah, welcome to another lesson in science. Today we'll be looking at family traits. Now, why do you look the way you do? Why do you look different from your siblings? Or why do certain disease conditions occur in certain families? And why are most people right-handed while others are left-handed? Now, these are some of the questions and more that we'll be answering in this lesson. So let's come along. Now, before we go into the topic of family traits in detail there are some terms that we need to get that we need to get acquainted with if we are going to um, understand even the topic properly so I'm going to be I'm going to be talking about some of these terms before we go into the topic proper now I'm going to be looking at the word genetics what is genetics genetics is the scientific study of heredity and traits in living things the next one is heredity Heredity is the transmission of traits or characteristics from parents to offspring. Now let's look at the word chromosome. The chromosome is a long DNA molecule with part or all of the genetic material of an organism. Now gene is the basic unit of heredity passed from parent to offspring. Homologous chromosome are a set of one maternal and one paternal chromosome that pair up with each other inside the cell during fertilization. Alleles are a pair of genes that occupy a specific location on a particular chromosome and control the same trait. Homozygous, that is used to refer to pure breed, is a pair of identical alleles or genes for a particular trait. While heterozygous, which is hybrid, is a pair of non-identical alleles or genes for a particular trait. Genotype. This is the genetic arrangement that make up the traits that an organism inherited from its parents. While phenotype is the set of observable characteristics or traits of an organism. Now moving along, now let's look into the topic proper, family traits. What are family traits? From the word, you can see that family traits are the traits in which family members share. While traits are the characteristics that can be transmitted from parents to offspring. This usually occurs during fertilization. Now, traits are determined by genes. Now, we've endeavored to define genes. Genes are contained in chromosomes which are found in the nucleus of a cell. Now, examples of traits that can be transmitted from parent to offspring. We have the example skin color, height, eye color, and so on. Now, from the picture that you have, you see other examples like dimple and chain, freckles, tongue rolling, attached hair loops, and so on. Now, there are two types of traits that, that I want us to look at. Now there are two basic type types of traits. We have dominant traits and recessive traits. Now dominant traits are traits which are expressed more often and observed more commonly in the population. Now they are also manifested in an individual in the presence or absence of recessive genes. Now we have example on the slide that you can see in front of you. We have the cleft chain, widow's peak, dimples, brown or black hair, freckles, brown eyes, and free air loops. These are the traits that are usually common in a population. While recessive traits are those traits which are not often expressed or commonly observed in a population. They, can, they also manifest in an individual. They do not manifest in an individual except in the absence of dominant genes. And examples of recessive traits that we have in the slide here no cleft chin, no widow speak, absence of dimples, blonde hair, absence of freckles, gray or blue eyes, and attached hair low. Now let's look at how these traits are transmitted from parent to offspring. Now you must know that uh, Gregor Mendel, a Swiss monk, is usually called the father of modern genetics because he carried out certain experiments which we are going to look at carefully here. It was the one that gave us the detail of how traits are transmitted from one from one uh, generation to another generation using plants using plants so uh, looking at your screen here uh, this square that you see right here is what we call the pony square the pony square that you have in the f2 that you see in the f2 that square there which shows the transmission of traits it's called the pony square the pony square is used to show the crossing of two of two uh, two organisms 
Now in this case, we are going to be looking at the crossing of two plants with different colors of flower. As you can see in the picture here, you, you have yellow and green flowered plants. Now both of them are pure breed or homozygous. In other words, they have the same type, the same type of alleles. As you can see, the yellow color plant here has a capital letter Y and capital letter Y, while the green plants here have small letter Y and small letter Y, showing that the yellow color plant is the dominant one, while the green color plant are the recessive one. So you see, each homologous, homozygous parent in the P generation introduces one, only one kind of gametes. So once they are crossed together like that, all the four offspring that they, that they produce are heterozygous offspring that has um, two different two different um, alleles making up the gene that is the Y the capital letter Y and the small letter Y so one gamete is pro one um, allele is produced by the yellow color plant while one allele is produced by the green color plant so all the four offspring have the same type of gametes one is capital letter and the other one is small letter and as you can see each one each one of the plants donates one of the alleles each now if you if you um, for the f1 generation you can see the product there the f1 generation produce a hybrid yellow flowered plant in other words they are heterozygous offspring now if you pick two of the heterozygous offspring in the f1 generation and you cross them together you can see in the f2 diagram that you have in front of you you can see that both of them produces you know different gametes one capital letter y one small letter y and once they are crossed together or they are self-pollinated what you have is the result that you have here you have a uh, three yellow plants and you have one green plant yes you have three yellow plants and one green plant now if you, are, if you look at the yellow plant if you look at the phenotypic ratio here you have three the observed uh, one that we see is three yellow plants and one green plant so you have the ratio three to one now when it comes to the genotypic ratio you can see that it's a bit different because the genotype produced you have y y you have a um, homozygous yellow plants you have a heterozygous yellow plant and you have homozygous create uh, homozygous green plants so you have the genotypic ratio to be one is to two is to one as you can see in the diagram above so this uh, explains how transmission of traits occurs in living organism in particular we are looking at plants so here. moving on why is the knowledge of family traits important why is the knowledge of family traits important now one of the importance of knowing or the knowledge of family traits is family genealogy now in the family genealogy it makes it easier to trace the family lineage and then use it to predict the present and future traits through the discovered traits as you can see in the diagram we have the family tree so the family tree here can show how traits are being transmitted from parents to offspring especially in the generations so you are who you are because of the traits that have been passed along from the great grandparents to grandparents to the parents and from there to you as an individual importance of family traits talks about the transmission of diseases now, with adequate knowledge of genetics, man, many genetic diseases can be prevented from being transferred from parents to offspring. Let me give you an example of um, a disease that can be inherited. That is the sickle cell trait. The sickle cell trait can be inherited from parents to offspring. Now, if, if both parents, let's say that someone, um, the father or the male has the... Uh, has the traits AS and the female has the blood uh, type uh, blood genotype AS. Now you see that if you do if you do the transmission of traits using the pony square, you will find out that that there is a one in four percent one in four chance 
of of an offspring getting the disease in other words one in four children uh, is likely to get the sickle cell disease now if both um, intending couples have the knowledge of their blood genotype they can easily you know prevent such a trait from passing from them to their offspring which can usually cause you know trouble or problems in the family if a family has a child or two children that have that inherited trait so the knowledge of um, family traits helps us to prevent we are going that. to be looking at another importance of family traits which is resemblance resemblance is a very common family trait which helps to identify members of the family as you see in the picture here you have siblings so you can see that it's easy to identify that they are family members why because they share similar traits which shows their resemblance and finally knowledge of family traits also helps to detect crime it also helps to detect crime like in the modern day uh, um, um, modern day uh, practice of criminal investigations you see the knowledge of you know the knowledge of um, DNA the knowledge of genetics can help even criminologists or criminal investigators to detect crime just by comparing DNA you know that is found at the scene of a crime you can easily tell you know from the knowledge of family traits you can easily detect you know similarities you know through a um, dna identification you can easily detect crime you see you can see you can compare a um, dna of family members and can use it to detect crime and that is you know, that is part out of of family traits now let's go to some in summary you can see that family traits are traits shared by family members. These traits are characteristics transmitted from parents to offspring. There are two types of traits, dominant and recessive traits. Examples of traits are color of skin, high color, body shape, and so on. Transmission of traits happen during fertilization. The pony square can be used to demonstrate the transmission of traits. Knowledge of family traits is important to prevent the transmission of diseases, show resemblance, determine family genealogy and the tech learners i want to go so, through this assessment i want to pause the video answer the question and see how much of the lesson you've been able to you know to understand and i'll see you again in the next class